Hello everyone, this is Contrary Sims. Welcome to another Sims Free Play build tour. Actually, today's tour is more like three tours in one because this lot actually contains a shopping strip with three different businesses as well as a playground. I have built it in what I consider a commercial district of my town, here on the right hand side of the bridge near the car dealership, real estate agency and mall. I imagine it to be possibly one of those areas that used to be kind of industrial and scummy with shipping yards and warehouses, but is now rapidly gentrifying with more upscale businesses moving in. I chose this particular lot alongside this harbour and made sure to design it so that it had frontages facing both the highway traffic and the foot traffic along the harbour front, even though you can't actually see either when you're inside the lot. This is actually a complete redevelopment of a strip of shops I already had in my town, but when the kids party event was announced I knew I had to tear it all down and rebuild it with the new stuff because it was so perfect to deck out my little retro milk bar cafe. On the ground floor there is the milk bar at the front with lots of the new items, a little flower shop over here as well. The original build had a small dressmaker's shop on the second floor which I have replaced with a secondhand bookstore because the dressmaker recently moved to a downtown location. This is built on the daycare template which was the prize for the daycare live event and it comes with this playground at the back. It's an extra area tacked onto the back of the lot that can't be built on or changed. The wavy fences and the chalk on the footpath are also part of the template. I imagine this as being a spot where families can come down for some shopping and recreation along a kind of esplanade along the coast. Tucking around the back of the building here, there's a side entrance into the florist. I've used the painting of a vase of flowers as their signage. Around this side of the building, if we take into account its location on the map, this wall would be facing another building that's next to it. So I have deliberately styled this to be unattractive and neglected like an urban laneway or that ugly unused strip alongside a train station, you know? So I've put up teen posters to look kind of like paste-ups or graffiti. It looks like the chef from the milk bar has just run out into the laneway to shovel a plate of food down his throat in the two seconds he's got to himself. Anyone who's worked in a kitchen can probably relate to that. Poor guy. So this is the Hello Sailor milk bar, which really lucked out with the corner shop front which takes advantage of the traffic from both the street and the esplanade. They have some small tables out the front, and you can see I've used some of the older candy stripe chairs along with the new items from the kids party update in the red, blue and white scheme for a fun nautical inspired theme. I have built this small balcony over the entrance as a kind of awning, and I've placed two of the double lounges on the top to look like sailcloths. This is another trick that I have lifted from Joy's creative finger, I've seen her do this a few times to make her commercial buildings look more realistic. I think it works really well here because it complements the nautical theme I've been going with. So heading inside, I've used the blue checkerboard floor, which is perfectly retro, and the urban bench tops as the bar which wraps around this corner. You can see the counter girl is wearing an adorable sailor girl outfit as her uniform. All along the bar, there are lots of the new food items displayed, including the milkshakes, of course. This bar wrapping around the corner is of course actually in two separate rooms, which you can see more clearly if I quickly head up to the mezzanine level. But with those walls back down, it does really appear as though it's just one long unit and those double doorways could actually be supportive pillars. In this narrow section, I have squeezed in one of the retro red and chrome table and stool sets. I imagine that this little area would be the best place to wait for and pick up takeaway orders. There's a teacher's blackboard here masquerading as a menu as well. Back out into the main seating area there's another small table and one of the new party tables from the event set up for a party of four who are yet to arrive for their booking. But we can see through these floor to ceiling windows another group enjoying their meal out on the terrace with beautiful waterfront views. Over here in the corner is a jukebox, because what retro cafe would be complete without a jukebox loaded up with rock and roll tunes? Behind the counter is a door accessing the kitchen where I have continued with the red, blue and white theme. Here's our chef hurrying back in from another smoko. 
I've put the industrial grill in here for frying up burgers and sausages. So behind the grill, I imagine that in this wall there is an opening or a pass through where food can be passed fresh off the grill to the serving counter. There is already a tray of burgers ready here for the counter staff to come along here and take out to the tables or bag them up for takeaway customers. And there are some takeaway bags ready to go as well. Over here there are stairs that will take us up to the mezzanine, where there is even more seating. So this mezzanine level overlooks the main floor and is lined all around here with these French style windows and the new ice cream banners. I think this looks so adorable and is really convincingly shop-like with the little striped awnings at the top of them. I also think it suits a retro cafe like this to have the mezzanine because I feel like split levels are a relatively common feature of them. I fit in another of the small tables alongside the banister and two of the undressed tables from the recent event. I also put up three of these abstract paintings from the snow chalet in a row here like a triptych because the colour scheme matches the cafe perfectly. There is one more level I have to show you up on the rooftop and it looks like all the preteens are keen to head up there as well. So let's follow him upstairs where we get into this little glass enclosure. I feel like there's probably a term for this kind of stairway enclosure but I don't know what it is. So this leads out onto a rooftop terrace with more seating. These adorable ice cream umbrella tables came from the chocolatier event and I used these urban chairs in white instead of the candy stripe ones just to tone down the colours on the roof a bit. I've lined the whole terrace with these little hedges and I blocked off the whole area with screens from the recent backyard beautification event. This terrace would have an amazing view, especially looking out in this direction toward the harbour. Over here there are some sofas with one of the urban coffee tables. The table doesn't really match the colours of the rest of the build, but the abstract design on the table matches almost exactly with the design on the paintings on the mezzanine level. You see that? I thought that was really neat to tie those two together. Moving along to the second business on this strip, which is a little flower shop called Flora's Floral Design. Heading in from this side, there's a path with a small sandwich board style sign, and there's an outdoor display with lots of flowers and plants out here to grab the attention of any passers-by. I've used the large chalet windows again as shop windows, where we can see a window display of different arrangements as well, and around here the side entrance which we peeked at earlier. But let's actually head in this way. There is a set of glass double doors set back here, which actually has access to all three businesses, including Hello Sailor on the right over here and to the left is the door to the florist. I've used a lot of French chateau items in here because they suited the flouncy floral style. I've also used the checkerboard floors again, but in green this time. At the counter is the florist waiting to help any customers. She has gift boxes stacked up at her side for boxing up any gift orders and plenty of storage for things like wrapping paper or vases. Over at the floral displays in the window there is a customer inspecting the arrangements. These arrangements all came from either the French Chateau or the Wedding Bells events. Through this open doorway behind the counter is the florist's workspace with more storage. I imagine these bottles are for chemical solutions that florists use to extend the life of their cut flowers. On the workbench over here are some arrangements in progress. These flowers I thought looked the most deconstructed. 
In fact, some of those daisies look a little wilted. They might not make the cut. If we head this way through the side entrance, we can duck around the side of the building to the bathrooms. There are two separate stalls here, so they could be gendered, but more likely not, because one is just a single stall, and the other one is more of a family stall with a changing table. It seems appropriate given the playground out the back that would attract families with young kids. For some reason the florist keeps doing the busting for the toilet dance, even though her toilet need isn't particularly low. I'm not sure what her problem is. <laughs> Let's head up to the last business on the strip, which is actually up on the second floor. Using the central entrance again, we can take this flight of stairs up to the landing, where we have another big floor to ceiling window to let plenty of light into the stairwell. Here is the entrance to Mr. Oldman's rare and antique bookshop. There are two ornate tapestries hanging either side of the door as signage. So I wanted this place to look like one of those dusty, stuffy old secondhand bookstores that has lots of beautiful and very old books and treasures, but everything is kind of piled up and overstuffed everywhere. There was only so much that I could do there without glitching things to overlap and while still allowing Sims to actually move through the space but I hope it still kind of has that cluttered feel to it. There's a lot of dark wood, dusty old, ornate rugs, and piles of books scattered around. At an old-fashioned desk here is the proprietor, Mr. Oldman, who is surrounded by so many messy piles of old books that you wonder how he could possibly get out of there. In the corner is a dusty old bookshelf that was from one of the magical sets, so that's why the books are floating around like that. Around in this corner is a little nook that I have filled with the narrow French bookshelves. And to fill in the little gap between the two open doorways, I have put in a secret door that looks like a bookshelf. That's one of the magical items as well. Over here you can see that there is a ladder and that leads up to this tiny mezzanine roof space that is lined all around with the bookshelves. I got this idea from one of Make 2's builds, I think they called it the mezzanine house, where they showed lots of experimental ideas with the mezzanine function including this awesome library, and I thought that this bookshop was the perfect place to try it out. You can see that Sims can't actually access this level using the ladder because there's no standing floor space next to it, but don't you just love the idea of someone swinging along that ladder to reach a book like Belle in Beauty and the Beast? Well that's all the shops in my harbour front shopping strip. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed the tour. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I will be back with more Sims Freeplay videos, so I'll speak to you all again soon. Bye for now.